Welcome back, everyone. On one night of the year, thousands of yellow spotted and Jefferson salamanders migrate to vernal pools to breed. But that's just the beginning of the story. And now for the second act, the battle for the eggs. On one night of the year, thousands of yellow spotted and Jefferson salamanders migrate to vernal pools to breed. We're here tonight to capture some of this rare activity on film. As the night wears on, the females begin to lay their eggs. They attach their eggs to underwater twigs and branches. The eggs are encased in a jelly-like coating that swells with water, forming a protective barrier around the embryos. In approximately 10 to 14 days, the larva will hatch, but these are perilous times. Predators lurk everywhere, and they all view the eggs as the same thing, a free meal. Red-spotted newts are the biggest threat. They patiently hover around the eggs and work all night to rip through the jelly. The newts only inhabit pools that keep water during the entire year. Although most pools used by the salamanders dry up, some perpetually retain their water. In case you're wondering, a newt is a category of salamander that spends its adolescence on land, returning to water at maturity. In the case of the red-spotted newt, it begins life as the red eft, shown here, transforming and changing color as it matures. Newts live an opposite life cycle of the yellow-spotteds and jeffersons, that reside in water as juveniles and live on land as adults. This strange looking insect is a caddisfly larva. It has the same idea as the newts, eat while the eating's good. This insect builds a camouflage shell around its body from leaves it collects on the pond floor. It will transform into a flying adult upon maturity. The jelly surrounding the eggs is a good defense, but persistence pays off. With much effort, the caddisfly finally bores through the jelly and devours the egg inside. In this picture, we can actually see its head inside the hollow egg chamber. One of the hardest parts about being out here is that every time I take a step, all this mud gets churned up, but also all this activity, this disturbance, the leeches can feel my vibrations. So here's one right now coming at me. Good thing I've got my waders on. We're all aware that leeches usually feed on the blood of other animals, but they too cannot resist the opportunity for a free meal. Notice the bright orange underbelly. When swimming, they have a fluid motion, and as I film, they're attracted towards the vibrations that I make in the water. Animals like leeches that feed on blood are called sanguivores. As we observe all this activity, we now realize this pool is like a whole universe within itself. Millions of tiny invertebrates are attracted to our lights and swim across the camera lens. More food for the red-spotted newts. Water boatmen dart rapidly about. They too are breeding at this time of year. Notice the paddle-like appendages they use to propel through the water. Even our egg eaters must be on guard. A giant water beetle lurks nearby. The beetle will eat anything it can get its claws on, even a red-spotted newt. A fast and powerful swimmer, they can also fly in the air from one water body to another. These large beetles are camouflage and blend well with the leaves on the pool's bottom making them difficult for us to find and a deadly predator 
for anything that swims by. Much to my surprise, tonight's warm temperature has awakened a toad. It's out a little earlier than usual, but it proves that you never know what you might find out here. Swimming on the water's surface, it looks like he's moving through outer space. Here on Connecticut Naturalist Television, we always encourage young people to take an active role in the environment. Here's a behind the scenes look at a night out with some student volunteers. Right now, we just took him off the road and we're gonna put him back on the side he wants to go, just so he can get there and get back to mating and get back to the other salamanders. So we're gonna let this little guy go. Got something? Uh, yeah, I found it like really, a tumor really or something on something on his leg. Is this a different species? What is that? Is that a peeper? No, it's a, it's a salamander. It's a, it's oh, it's like a four-toed yeah. salamander. What's that? Wow. It's got four toes. It's, it's rare. <laughs> well, it's oh, that's rare, what that lump is? Rare. What's a lump? That's a leech. Ew. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> There's leeches? Another special guest is this four-toed salamander. It's the only salamander with four toes on its hind legs. Other salamanders have five digits, just like you and me. Instead of laying eggs in the vernal pool, females attach their eggs to patches of moss. Four toads are only about two to three inches in length, much smaller than the yellow spotteds, which range from six to eight inches long. Although this vernal pool is filled with many different life forms, there is one important species that's missing, fish. The lack of fish is a vital characteristic for vernal pools. The absence of fish allows the salamanders to develop in a totally unique ecosystem. If fish were present, the eggs would have no chance of survival. After all, the insect and newt competition is already fierce enough. Stay tuned, folks. We've still got a lot more to come on this week's episode. Up next, the daylight brings yet another species to the pool.